ministry teaching by Illumination Kingdom Teachings. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. Grab your Bible, pen and notepad, and get ready to feast on the Word of God. Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome back to Illumination Kingdom Teachings. Hey. Thank you guys, all of you guys, for coming out to be with us again this Sunday, on this Sunday, to enjoy a fabulous message from Pastor Derek on this day. Here at Illumination Kingdom Teachers, you are always in for a treat from the Lord. Now, I have something to say, and it's called Think on This. And this time, I'm putting my name at the beginning of the message. And if it resonates with you, go back and watch this again and put your name in it. So, the title is, Do Not Allow God's Promises to You Crumble Down. Tria, what God has for you, do not mess it up by giving in and giving up no matter how hard it may be to you. Tria, God has placed you into something that he knows you can do. Tria, you must not be afraid, impatient, or have any type of anxiety because God did not give it to you. Tria, you are bold, strong, courageous and fearless because you have decided for yourself to actively do what it takes to get the word of God out into the world. Why? Because God asks you to do it and you're willing to obey. Tria, do not allow God's promises for you to crumble down. Now for our announcements. Treasure Hunt of the Bible, y'all, is an interactive Bible study. You can comment and ask questions in, in, the comment, in the comment box. There is no right or wrong questions. We are not here to judge you. Guys, come on out to Treasure Hunt of the Bible. You are really going to get something that will feed your spirit and open up your eyes to see what the Lord has for you. 
So right now we're looking at, we're in the book of Exodus, looking at Moses and his life and what, how he obeyed God himself, even though he was afraid to do it. But he still obeyed God and trusted him and had faith in him. So if you're resonating to this, uh, this um, YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to smash that bell for further notifications. And I want to say one more time, y'all. I want to give y'all a good welcome. You are in a good spot. When you're looking at Illumination Kingdom teachings and what they teach here, what we teach here, and what God has for us all here. So welcome to your YouTube channel, people, or Facebook, all the platforms out there, and, and enjoy yourself, okay? Because you're, you're not alone. I'm not alone. Nobody's alone. So we're all in this together, okay? So I just want to give, go back and give you a better welcome than I did earlier. So as Pastor Derek comes forth, this is the day yeah. that the Lord Amen. and we will what? Rejoice. 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 And what? Be glad, Be glad in it. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Amen. Amen. It's better now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For this is the day the Lord has made. And we will what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Energy. Positive energy. Let's stay. Are y'all ready? Ready, ready? Are you ready? Ready. All right, say it like you mean. Are you ready? ready. Get on your mark. mark. Get set, set and go. Hallelujah. You may be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What I have seen this morning, it touched my heart. I heard a storm about a woman who was self-discovering herself. And she sits in the midst of us even now. She is discovering who she is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, it brought tears to my eyes because I remember 
when she didn't have that type of vision for her life. But now she's starting to see. Now she's starting to break through. Now she's starting to understand that I have purpose and I am not going to be afraid. I'm going to do what God wants me to do it. And I'm going to do it not by myself, but with the help of Holy Spirit. It's an amazing thing when you start to discover and break through all of the pain, all of the strain, all the oppression, all the affliction that you have endured over your life. Now she understands that I do have a voice. I do have a future. You know, a lot of people think the future, when you think of future, that's something that's, that's, that's way off. But your future is, is the next tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Seconds. So you must ask yourself, what am I going to do with myself in the next tick tock? Who am I going to be in the next tick tock? Who would I want to become? In the next tick tock, because God has placed some great things in my life, in me from the beginning of my creation. Don't you guys know that there was a set time, a set date, a set hour, a set minute for me to get to this planet? It wasn't by coincidence that I came here at a certain time and a certain uh, date. It was all by God's design. So if he planned to design my beginning, then you know that he already designed my ending. It's just up to me to figure it out and to understand in order for me to follow the blueprint that God has for me, then I must what? Follow his lead. Let me say it again. I must follow his lead. In doing so, I must understand that I'm going to have some tests and some trials in my life that I may not fully understand or like. Let me give you an example. I said the other day, a couple of days ago, I said, Lord, I've learned some of the best lessons that I've learned in my life are some of the hardest lessons I ever learned in my life. But see, I didn't grow, I, excuse me, I grew from those hard lessons. Those are the lessons that grew my life. And they came through strain, making some bad decisions, letting the people, letting the wrong people in my life, following after the wrong people, and doing things I shouldn't have been doing, instead of been concentrating on myself and doing what God had for me. Instead of I wanted to go with everybody else. And in this old time, through my decisions, they hurt. Some of those lessons I learned brought tears to my eye because they was, hurt, they was hurtful things, horrible things, things that made me say, why did I do that? Why do I think of myself so low? Why am I self-esteem the way, is it, way it is? Why is my very foundation shaking right now when I think about certain decisions or certain uh, things that I've endured in my life? But God says, son, though you have went through some hard lessons, you get up and you keep going. Why is it that we grow from our hard lessons, not the easy ones, but the ones that almost break you in hell? But those are the ones, what I mean by that, things I didn't understand, circumstances I didn't understand. Why this? Why that? You heard people say, why does this have to happen to me? But I heard somebody say, why not you? Who do you suggest it be then? Who do you suggest it be? But it was you. And I know that it was hard. 
And I know it was painful. But you're still here to overcome them, not by yourself, but with somebody who is greater than you. Somebody who understands your pain. Somebody who understands your situation. Someone, some, someone who understands your, uh, your, 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 your been, you've been stigmatized and you've been criticized, opinionized, all those things. Somebody understands. And because of that, and just because you see yourself in a certain way, he still feels the same way about you. Why? Your greatness is inside of you. Let me say it again. Your greatness is inside of you. But see, we continue to live out of what we have already experienced in our life. We continue to live out of what we've already been exposed to and not realizing the new is right in front of you. Instead, we look at our rear view mirror instead of looking at in front of us. How can we develop and grow in the things of God if we continue to live out of what we have already experienced and what we've already known through our past experiences? We can't allow the known to be a part of the unknown, which is your future. Lives are, are, are at stake and we still don't understand or see who we are in God. Yeah. We still don't see it. Your perception is not right. Your perception has to change. Your, our attitudes has to, has to change. But it starts with our perception of how we see ourselves. I was one of them who had a low self-value or standard of myself. I've been down that road, but now I'm starting to understand through trying times and situations and circumstances, I understand that God has still got me here for a reason, and I still need to find out what it is, and I still need to develop and go after it with everything that I got. That's my life's journey, to discover who I am, Discover my giftings inside. Find out and hold on to that purpose that God has in me and fulfill it and give it to somebody else. I'm here to make sure somebody else fulfill their destiny and that, and that it continues to go on. Continues to go on. Continue to reproduce because the manufacturer or my Heavenly Father, who is the manufacturer, I am his product. He made me to reproduce. He made me to be fruitful and multiply, to give it to somebody else, not to keep it for me. Hallelujah. So welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. I pray and hope that my media director has everything together now. Hallelujah. We're going to keep going. God still has some things that he wants to say. He understands. I understand that I'm not here alone on this platform. He's here with me right now. And he has some things to say. Maybe it's something that does not come from a computer. Maybe it's something that I have to get from the rivers of living water that's inside of me because I have that, that unlimited resource of power flowing in me because I was sitting there where I was doing. Last week, I, I got up extra early. I got up extra early. And I went upstairs and I sat in my office. I said, I want to spend some time with the Lord. It was early, like six in the morning. And before I started to open my mouth, I heard some say, hush. Mm. You know, around six o'clock, that's when it's still kind of dark outside, you know. And I 
This is what I did. So a voice said, what do you hear? What do you hear? Right at this moment, what do you hear? I said, I don't hear nothing. Nothing at all. No distractions. No voices. No engines, no motorcycles, no computers, no phone. Just silence. Nothing. And then I started to hear water. I started to hear water, but it wasn't from anything that was going on around me. This what I heard was inside. And it was when that calmness, that peaceful moment, when nobody was around, is when my heavenly father started to talk to me about me. And you would think that you would have a lot to say to the Lord at that time, but all you can do is just be quiet. How many of us do that when we get into the presence of God? Just listen and allow him. Father, we thank you so much. We give you glory and honor and praise right now, Lord. Oh, Lord, I come to you asking that we will use this earthen vessel. If you see something fit in me that can be used to bless your people, oh Lord, I am willing and I'm yielding myself to you even now because I need you. I am so insufficient without you, Lord. I'm not a self-made man. I'm so mediocre and average without you, Lord. And I need you right now. Holy Spirit, you speak and I will follow your lead. I, bring, I'm not, I, I don't come alone, Lord. I'm bringing your people with me because we need a word today that will bless their heart, that will charge them up like never before and bring them to a greater understanding of your love for their life. And we give you glory and honor forevermore. Amen. Amen. I do want to say one shout out before I get started. Happy birthday to Camilla. Mm -hmm. Special young lady. I pray that her day is full of joy and laughter. Amen. Understanding who we are. What drives you in the morning? When you wake up in the morning, now you see yourself, what drives you to get motivated? Is it your job? No. Well, maybe. There's so many people that work now they, they, they don't even like their job. Mm -hmm. They dread going to their job. So what drives you in the morning? Is it, is it your children? What drives you? What motivates you? What gives you purpose in life? Have you ever thought about those things? Lord, I know, for me, I know at one time I would be at my job and I'd say, you know what, Lord, there's something more than just this. There's something more than just working on this computer and making somebody else's dreams come true. As I'm working on a computer, somebody, the owners or CEOs or whatever, the management team are somewhere in a, a vacation, somewhere over in Dubai or Honolulu, wherever they may be. But I'm sitting over here working. I'm the one eyes straining and hands feeling some way and body breaking down and weight coming on because I'm sitting behind a computer. 
It never occurred to you that I should be out there in the world making a difference. Using God's gift, ability that he has given me to help somebody. But he did. He made us creatures to communicate and have companionship and to love one another and respect one another and continue to help one another. But whatever the dreams and the desires may be, that is my goal, to help people's dreams and desires come, tr come true by the help of Holy Spirit. A life of God I've been talking about for so long now. It is possibilities. I like that. When you look in the mirror, you say, that's possibilities in me. I'm a possibility. How you doing this morning, possibility? Doing fine. I'm looking for ways and opportunities to make somebody's life better. I'm a possibility. You're a possibility. Greatness. I am a possibility to help somebody who's in need. But the woman of God said, I'm not here up alone. I'm carrying something with me. Someone is abiding with me forever. Somebody is dwelling with me right now. And somebody who is in me right now, giving me the ability to do what I do. And that is Holy Spirit. Do you know the person of Holy Spirit? Have you locked in to the Holy Spirit? Have you connected intimately with the Holy Spirit? Do you make time for the Holy Spirit? Do you acknowledge the Holy Spirit? Do you give him your praise? Do you give him your thanks? Do you give him your worship? Holy Spirit. He is God by himself. All with the other three, excuse me, the other two personalities. He is still God in every system, in every area of our lives. He is still God in totality. We've learned that. The very breath I breathe is God. When I look at myself, I see God because he is the one that made me like him. He is the one who gave me purpose. He is the one that gave me breath. He is the one that gave me everything that I need in life. So everything that involves D or me is God. See, but see, that comes to how you see yourself, your perception of yourself. Understanding. that there is possibilities for me. I have not gone all the further I can go. There's still more to me. You still haven't seen the real me yet. I'm still developing. I'm still growing. I'm still refining myself because I want to see fully who God has made me to be. And as I continue to change, as I continue to, God continue to mold this clay in his hands, I understand that there's more to be learned. There's more to discover. I have not gone as far as I can go. I have not done everything that I can do. Can you say the same that you've given God everything that you have? Have you stepped out on fear? Even though those times, I remember when I had to do some things when I was shaking in my knees, I said, Lord, I know that you're with me. I know that something great is going to happen. I just had to believe it. And it turns out it was all right. Do I have it all together? No. Do I have all the training? No. Do I have all the education? No. Do I have all the etiquette? No. Am I, do I have all the articulations? No. The fishermen didn't. The disciples did. But still, when this powerful boom I connected with, 
he walked with me. Who is Holy Spirit? I don't know if I'm going to get through all this today, guys. Oh, this is so amazing. First, we found out that Holy Spirit is God. I told you that. We Then we found out that the Holy Spirit was the Father, the earthly Father of Jesus. When he was the Word made flesh, Holy Spirit watched over him as he was a kid, watched over him as he was growing up and uh, over time in, in Galilee, watched over him until the time of his ministry when he turned 30 years old and something happened. Something happened. This is what it says in Luke 1 35. Hallelujah. She got my slash of glory to the father and the angel answered and said unto her, Gabriel, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Now remember that. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. That word shall sound like something's going to happen in the future. It didn't say that this holy thing is the son of God. It said he shall be, which means there is an appointed time and an appointed moment that he shall be called the son of God. Which lets me know that it's something God was looking for or was planning in his son or wanted to hear from his son at an appointed time for him to be called the son of God. What was that time? When he went to go be baptized at the Jordan by John the Baptist, the Bible says, Jesus said, I must fulfill all righteousness. John permit me. And he said, I will do so. And when he submitted himself, when he bowed down in within his heart, when he submitted his life to, to the Father, then the Bible says the heavens were opened. But see, something had to happen on the inside of this man called Jesus. But the first thing he did was what? Submit. He yielded his will, his life. God, I give it to you. And it was at that moment, God said, now this is what I was looking for. Now this is my beloved son and who I am well pleased. So what does that say for us? If you want to open heaven, and if you want to get the attention of the Father, yield, submit your life to him. What does that mean? Give him all of your stuff. When Jesus came here, and the Bible says he looked upon all the multitude of people, the Bible said that Jesus had compassion because he saw something when he looked at the people. He saw oppression, injustice, traditional leaders, just bringing and destroying people's lives. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. He saw that. And I'm starting to see that sometimes too. When I look at people, I can understand there's something broken or something off in them. And so it compels me to ask them, what can I do for you? How can I help you? That's, that's Jesus in me. There's something just not right. Let me go on. The second one, well, the third one was Holy Spirit is the faithful witness. Right? Hallelujah. Bible says in 5 John 15, 26, and, but when the comforter is come, when whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, 
which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. You remember this. But God showed me something. He said, what does it mean to, that Jesus was talking about he'd been with me from the beginning? He said, you shall testify or bear witness of me because you've been with me from the beginning. What that means was they was with him during his life, during his death, and his resurrection. And it was at that time Jesus said, now all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Now you, because you have been with me, because you have seen my life, because you have seen my death and my burial, my burial and resurrection, now you go out and teach the people. And I will be with you every step of the way. And we saw that in the book of Acts. You can't do what you were designed to do. Find out what it is that God wants you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. Number, number four. We talked about this. The Holy Spirit is the revealer and the power of God. But he's also the conveyor of God. We said in John 14, 12, he said, Verily, very I say unto thee, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And the greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever she's, you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. For if he love me, keep my commandments, and I pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That word comforter means parakletos, means counselor intercessor, helper of one who encourages and comforts. Y'all remember that. I looked at that carefully. Someone who comforts. The very thing that the comforter is, is the, every, it's the very same thing that Jesus did. He gave counsel. He interceded for people. Remember when he told Simon, he said, Simon, Satan has come. He wants to sift you as we. He said, but I prayed for you. That your faith will not fail. Interceding for him. He is the helper. Because he gave you authority. And he trained you. And he's still training us. That's an everyday task. And he encourages and comforts us. How? Through his word. Through his relationship. Through our comfort. Or through our covenant with him. This is everything Jesus was. So what I'm saying is that Jesus and Holy Spirit are one. They're one. They're one. And that word says abide with you forever means that he will forever remain with you, live with you, dwell with you. Not in just this life, but in the life to come. We will always need the help of Holy Spirit, because he is the teacher. He is the one that leads and guides you into all truth. So that which makes helps me to understand that when I leave here, or now until when I go home, he will always be with me. Amen. The word truth means the spirit of truth. Truth means someone who is truthful, truthfulness corresponding to reality. Thank you corresponding to reality. This truth can mean to where we get our English word, reality. So what that's saying is the Holy Spirit is the one who will reveal to us the truth or the reality of God. 
What's your reality? What's your reality? Every morning you wake up in the every every time you wake up in the morning, your eyes open. What's your reality? What's your reality? Is it promising? Is there possibilities ahead of you? How do you see yourself? What do you think about yourself? What's your reality? So, the comforter has come to do three things. Abide with you forever, dwell with you, and be in you. Abide with you, dwell with you, and be in you. The comforter, Jesus, is inside. The power of God is inside. Which lets us know that we can do all things. We can do all things. Say it with me like you mean it. We can can do all things things in Christ Jesus. John 16 and 12 says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, the comforter is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. For so whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now, who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? Jesus. See the reverse role? First, Jesus said, I don't do the work. I don't speak of myself. The Spirit of God in me, he doeth the works. But now Jesus says, the comforter shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he he hears. That shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So who is he hearing from? Who is the Holy Spirit hearing from? He's hearing from Jesus. He'll get that one going home. I hope, I hope you get that. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. See, once you really start to get an understanding. Lord, give me understanding. Open up my eyes that I may see what you're trying to tell me. That's why meditation is so important. Lord, let the scripture speak to me. What is it saying to me? Lord, I need to get understanding. If you have to say that verse all day till your phone battery runs dead, charge it up again until you get an understanding of what these scriptures are saying. Over and over and over, repetition. Not just read the verse and say, well, I ain't get the understanding of it. Well, well, it's just what it is, what it is. No, it's not. I don't want to be a person who looks in the mirror and soon I walk away, I forget who I just looked at in the mirror. I want to know who I am. I want to know what I saw. I want to know who I see. I want to get an understanding of this word. I need this word in my life so I can not only read it and understand it, but so I can do it. The Bible is more than just reading. It's about doing. The presence of God or the power of God within us help us to be. But the Holy Spirit is the one to help us to do. To do what? Be a, provide a service for other people. The Holy Spirit was not given to us for us. Remember, when Jesus received the Holy Spirit, he took off and was helping everybody for three and a half years. Before then, those 30 years, you didn't didn't hear much about Jesus doing any miracles. But when he received the Holy Spirit, 
It's like us. When we receive the Holy Spirit, now it's time for us to take off and get to work. Hallelujah. Uh. The power of God inside of me. The presence of Jesus inside of me. Jesus becomes real to me as I continue to read my word, meditate on the word, worship him, and give him praise. But he becomes real to me even more by the person of Holy Spirit. He becomes real to me by Holy Spirit. I can't do it alone. I need the help of the comfort. And also the Holy Spirit is the power of God. We talked about he is the power of God. The power. Oh, the power, which is what? Dynamus, which is at what? Boom. Dynamus. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You see that? And ye shall be witnesses unto me. You see? As soon as the Holy, the power came of God came upon them, then they had the ability to be witnesses. It was then after they received the Holy Spirit, Jesus, those teachings for three and a half years became alive in them. They started to understand the parables. They started to understand the scriptures. They understand what Jesus was saying. He said, you remember Jesus saying, you might not understand it now, but you will later. And once they received Holy Spirit, something went off in them like a ticking time bomb. He said, oh, I know what it is now. Lord, let's go. I can finish the work that you have called me to do. Let's go, fellas. It's time for us to stop sitting down and start moving and start doing things God wants us to do. And the Bible says, as they went along, that Jesus himself was helping them. So they went alone. So every time, whatever we do for the work of the Lord, we're not alone. But you got to believe it. Just believe it. That's the thing. Just have faith that God can use somebody like me. It doesn't matter. Just that's the problem. In order for us to help other people, we have to stop thinking that we need the approval of other people. We have to get free from other people's opinions. Then you can help them. That comes through knowing who you are. Think about it like this, an example. When Jesus asked them, as his disciple, who did men say that I am? Some say prophet. Some say John the Baptist. Elijah, one of the prophets, and so on and so forth. You see, when Jesus asked that question, he already knew who he was. He had already answered the question before, before he even answered the question. Before, excuse me, before he even asked the question, he already knew who he was. Because if he knew that he just relied on what they said, then he knew that it would, he'll be all over the place. Some say, I'm a, I'm a prophet, and some say this. No, he understood who he was. He knew who he was. And that's how we have to be. We have to know who we are. I don't need the approval of men. There's going to be critics. There's going to be opinions. People are going to have something to say about us. So what? We can't live out of that lens, that narrow thinking. We have to go beyond and see God and allow God to show us who we are in him. His opinions matter. How he sees me matter. Power is inside of us. So the power of God comes to you to do what? I have a slide for that now. Hallelujah. 
who provide a service for others. Mm -hmm. You have the power to be witnesses now. You can preach the gospel with power and you can declare his power. We saw it with John. They spoke with this. Not just to anybody, but some powerful men at that time. That's just like you going before whatever your, you think a powerful person is. And you standing before them and they looking down at you like this. Who do you think you are? What can you tell me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, who do you think you are? You can't tell me nothing. You don't have the education. You don't look the part. You came from a bad background. Who are you? You can stand up there with boldness. And declare the power of God. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. To a point where they be in awe. The Bible says they marveled because they understood that these were not learned men. They were ignorant men. But yet, the power of God was right before their face. And they could not deny it. They couldn't work against it. The only thing they can do is threaten them. Again, that Holy Spirit is the unlimited resource of power. In that day, guys, in John 7, in that day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Oh, I need a drink right now. A drink of the Spirit. Somebody, somebody with me right now. Somebody, somebody talk to me. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake of the Spirit. Jesus was talking about the spirit which they have, which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus had not, of course, been glorified. It's before his death. Hallelujah. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost to drink of the cup of Holy Spirit. Mm. Feel your thirst. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to share a story with you guys. Well, I'm going to share a, a chapter with you guys coming out of uh, 1 Corinthians 2. We may be able to get through all of it, I don't know. Hallelujah. But I want, to, I want to give you an example of what it means that God, the Holy Spirit is a revealer. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals to us the deep the things of God, the spiritual things of God. We should all get an understanding of what this is really saying to us. Let me break it down. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to read this. And I, brethren, when I, came, when I came to you, this is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church, okay? He came, he said, I did not come to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom. The word excellency means authority or superiority. I came not to you with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among myself. The word determined means I decided not to know anything among you. Save Christ Jesus and him crucified. In other words, what he was saying, the only thing that I did, I am just like you. I come telling you the testimony of what Jesus did for me. He was probably talking about his experience with God on the road to Damascus. That was Paul's testimony. If you read the book of Acts, that's all he talked about was his testimony of how he met Jesus and how Jesus changed his life on the road of Damascus. 
This is what he said. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man, wisdom, intellect, reasoning, science, philosophy, man's philosophy. No, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. What Paul's saying is, I'm not alone. I'm going to show you something that you can do. Something that you can experience for your life. Demonstrating spirit, presence of God in your life, and the power of God in your life. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of who? God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that came, that come to naught. That means they come to nothing, it's worthless. That word princes means rulers. He was talking about the traditional men, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Pharisees and Sadducees and the Sanhedrin and the priests and so on and so forth. This, in other words, this is not about the traditions and the philosophy and the laws of men. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. That word mystery means secrets. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. He said, this wisdom which God ordained before the world, before the world, unto our glory. Next slide. Next slide. Which none of the princes of this world, talking about the Pharisees and the so on and so forth, the traditional men, for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. And this is where it gets interesting. But as it is written, eyes have not seen nor is heard, neither had it entered into the heart of men. I'm sure you guys have probably heard that before. The things which God had prepared for them that love him. It says, but as it is written, eyes have not seen, neither nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. What that made me think of is this right here. John 14 and 7. Even the spirit of truth whom, they, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Her eyes have not seen, neither hear. He's not talking about carnal minds of men because they cannot understand the things of God. And it says, you notice it says, prepare for those who love him. These are, this is a certain class of people right here. Spiritual people. Those who have a relationship with God. Those who are in right standings with him. Let me take it a little bit further. Those who are in covenant with him. Those that he can trust. God reveals or shares the mysteries of his word or treasures with those he can trust. He doesn't show his mysteries to just anybody. He don't share his secrets with just anybody. He has to be somebody who we can trust, someone who's in right standing with him, somebody who uh, in relationship with him, and somebody who truly loves him for him, not for what he can do for them, but for him. But see, but God, verse 10 said, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. What did, he, what, did he, what did he reveal to us? The mysteries, the secret hidden wisdom of God. It didn't say on their own strength and their own intellect, did it? It says by the spirit, those things were revealed. Holy Spirit is the revealer. It's better. For the Spirit searches all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Oh, what that means. Searches right there means to search, to look into, to try to find. Which means the Spirit of God is like a, he's in search mode all the time. Trying to find the deep things in God's heart. 
to reveal to who? Us. And it said the deep things of God. It means the things that are beneath the surface of the word. Those things that are deep. It says depth. Oh, there's depth to God. How can we understand it then? By the Holy Spirit, he is the one that reveals. He is the one that leads us to all truth. He is the one that brings us to all uh, understanding of the word of God. And it also says in Romans 8, the spirit of God helpeth us with our infirmities, mm-hmm. our weaknesses. The spirit of God is there to help us. Romans 8, 26, 27. Mm-hmm. Helpeth us with our infirmities. But what man knoweth the things of a man? Save the spirit of man which is in him. See, this is you see in the carnal or the natural man. Now let's take it to the spirit. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Who can know the heart of God, the spirit of God? How can we understand spiritual things? The spirit of God. Who reveals to us the word of God, spiritual things. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit, which is of God, right? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, God. Loves to give these things to us. He loved to share his word with us. He loved, he loved to share his word and his, his life with us. Which things also we speak, not in the words of which men wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. See, he is the comforter and he also teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And what that means is, pairing means, let me say it this way. Comparing means explain. So what it's saying is the Holy Ghost teaches explaining spiritual things with spiritual. And where spiritual means pertaining to the spirit. Let me say it again this way. But which the Holy Ghost teaches or explains spiritual things that are pertaining to the spirit or the kingdom of God or the spirit of uh, of the word of God the Holy Spirit explains but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolish unto him this is the carnal man this is the natural man this is the fallen nature of man because we understand that the natural man or the carnal mind of man wants nothing to do with spiritual things They cannot see it. They cannot see the Holy Spirit. Neither neither do they know him. Neither can they know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Because man cannot see beyond their intellect or reasoning or their own philosophy. So now I'm trying to get you guys to understand. In order for us to understand the word of God or anything that God has for our life spiritually, we need the assistance of the Holy Ghost. And the, and the Bible said that the Holy Ghost will explain to us mm-hmm. what it is that sees us want us to do. Jesus is the one that guides Jesus is the one that helps. Jesus is the one that intercedes. Jesus is the one that encourages. Jesus is the one that comforts. And he does it through Holy Spirit, who we have inside. So what do we say? We have everything that we need, right? So from this day forward, we're going to get up and start doing what God called us to be. Or are we going to continue to sit down and say, I'm still fearful. I still don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. But the first thing is, don't panic. 
and allow the Holy Spirit, get in that place where you can close the door, turn the phone off, turn the TV off, turn the radio off, turn the kids off, and just get before your heavenly Father and say, Lord, speak to me. Because I know that you can hear me because you are inside of me. And there's nothing that I can't accomplish. Lord, I don't want to no longer sit down. I've sat down long enough. I'm ready to do. I'm ready to do. With you. It's not about me. It's about you. Wherever you want me, Lord, that's what I want to be. Wherever I'm needed, that's where I want to be. Whatever I can do, that's what I want to do. Whatever you want me to do, that's what I want to do. Show me. Did I think I'd be up here? No. Because I was the one that couldn't, they said was, I want to go there. But I'm here now. I went beyond the labels of what men said about me. Can you do the same? Some of us came into the world with, with, at a disadvantage because of sin, but, but also because where we grew up, what people said about us. A lot of times people say things about you because they're afraid to see you elevate, because they see, they see you go out there and do something for your life, something that they never did. So they criticize you because why they want to keep you right where they are. But you got to say, pardon me, excuse me. I got to keep going. Praise the Lord. I pray for you, but I got to go. I got to let go of things that people have said about me. You need my help? Okay, I pray, I'll be praying for you, but I got to keep going. You got to learn how to let things go. We got to learn how to let people go. We got to learn how to let uh, people with critics go. We got to learn how to let people's opinions go and get to doing what God has called us to do. It's important because the world is doing it. The world is doing it every single day. You look on TV, the world is doing some things that make you say, wow, it's, it's really happening in our time. But it is. And what are we going to do? You're saying just little old me? No, it's not just little old you. Because you, just like Peter and John, just like all the apostles did at that time, they changed the world for Jesus. And these are stories we're going to forever be talking about all through eternity, what they did. But what about them saying, what about John and Peter saying, what about us talking about what you did? Man, I remember, I, I know what we did, but man, what you did. How about that? When you get to that place, they can come to you and say, oh, it's an honor to meet you. I saw what you did while you was there. Let me shake your hand. I want to honor you because you did what God called you to do. Was it easy? No. Did I have to let some things go? Yes. Did I have to let some people go? Yes. Did I have to go upstream where the, where the world said go downstream? Yes. And will it be hard? Yes. Will it be some time I want to give up? Yes. Will it be some time that I have struggles? Yes. Will I have setbacks? Yes. Will it be some day that I just want to throw in a towel? Yes. But if you understand who is inside of you, you can overcome those things. Glory to the Father. Overcome. Let's do it. The boom is in you. Use the boom through the words that we speak. Through the words that we speak. You have to understand the power of your words. It starts with the words you say out of your mouth. I can't allow negativity to come out of my mouth any longer. I'm going to be a prick. Petitioner of the scriptures that says that I can do all things in Christ Jesus if I just believe. 
No man can hold me back. My family can't hold me back. My job can't hold me back. No one in this world can hold me back from doing what Jesus called me to do. Nobody. Hallelujah. You see, God gave us authority, right? But he didn't give it to us to use it against people. He gave us authority to, to release people. People need to be released. People are broken. People are bound. Broken. And God says, Jesus said, I want to use you to help them. I want to use you. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stick a pen right there. Go over to the Father. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We give you praise and thanks. Oh, Lord, I pray that they continue to understand that they're not alone. Jesus said, I'm never alone because I know my Father is with me. Bring us to a greater understanding of it. Get us to get an understanding to get up and go. The Spirit of God is awaiting. The Spirit of God is willing. But we have to be willing. Stir up that fire in our, in our soul. Stir up the fire in our bones that we may do it. Lord, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to believe your word and I'm just going to step out on faith and I'm going to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. So if your heart is resonating to this channel, Illumination Kingdom teaching, God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. If you are resonating to this ministry, go to kingdomtools.net. Find your way to kingdomtools.net. It's on the path. Get those fingers to going. If you want to sow a seed, if you want to pray with us, if you want to sow a seed, if you want to join us, there's room to join us because there's a lot of work to do for the Lord. KingdomTools.net, any platform, social platform that are out there, KingdomTools.net is where you will find us. Hallelujah. Come on back out on next Tuesday, 7 o'clock Central Time for another episode of Treasure Hunter the Bible, as Tria said in our announcements earlier. Come on out next Tuesday, and we will continue in the book of Exodus. Amazing, amazing book. Hallelujah. If you cannot, come on back out next week, and we will continue on with a life with God. I hope you guys are learning and that you're growing. But, but, I hope, but I really want you guys to understand how much greatness is inside of you. We have to stop Letting pettiness. Father, we thank you so much. And I pray that your day, you're on this beautiful Sunday morning, that your day will continue to be full of joy, laughter, and peace. Until next time, God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.